Hello students, good afternoon. This is Professor Henderson and this is part three of the head to toe assessment. So the Weber test. So the Weber test is a screening tool that nurses use with a tuning fork. It detects um, conduction hearing loss. Um, hearing loss to the uh, one side of the ear or unilaterally or bilaterally. So actually with the tuning fork, the, ner the nurse holds a fork. It strikes the fork and creates a vibrating sound and plays the tuning fork on the center of the client's head. So um, the patient should um, hear the sound in both ears equally. You also have to time it. How long they, um, when did this sound disappear? If the patient hears the sound in one ears better than the other, that's called lateralization. They should hear the song in both ears equally. And if they hear it in one ear better than the other or longer than the other one, it's called lateralization to one ear. So the nurse strikes the tuning fork, plays the tuning fork on the center of the patient's head and ask the patient if they hear the song equally in both ear or they hear it better in one ear, which is called um, lateralization to one ear. So the Rhiney test. The Rhiney test is another test that is also used to um, check air conduction versus bone conduction. So the nurse strikes the, um, the tuning fork and place the tuning fork on the mastoid process of the bone behind the ear and ask the patient if when they no longer hear the sound on the mastoid process, then the nurse places the, um, the tuning fork in front of the ear. So the AC, air conduction, should be greater than bone conduction. So basically, the client should hear the song longer in front of the ears than behind the mastoid process. So make sure you have a... Um, a watch with a second hand so you can count how long the patient when the patient doesn't hear the song anymore on the mastoid process and then you place it in front of the ears how long did they hear it in front of the ear should be longer so AC is greater than BC air conduction should be greater than bone conduction So count, count, counting the time the song is heard by ear conduction, quickly place still the vibrating fork in front of the ear canal and ask the patient to tell you when they no longer hear the song. So ear conduction should be greater than bone conduction. Now, nose and sinuses, assessing the nose. Look at the nose for, um, observe the shape and size and the color of the nose. The nose should be symmetrical. Check the nose for airflow by occluding, ask the patient to occlude one nostril and inhale. Check for air patency. Assess the patency of the nose. Um, check the nose. It should be pink and moist. Look for any redness or sloughing or any polyps. Um, palpate the, um, the frontal, the frontal and the maxillary sinus. Ask the patient if they're feeling any pain or any tender tenderness. Ask if the patient have, um, seasonal allergies.
mouth and pharynx. Look at the lips. The lips for texture and hydration, the contour. Look at the lips for any lesions. Pink and moist and symmetrical. If the lips appear to be pale, that might be a sign of anemia. Cherry color lip indicates carbon monoxide poisoning. Anemia causes the lips to be paler or cyanotic. Look at the contour of the lips. Look for any lesions. Are there any open lesions, sores? Look at the gums. The gums should be pink, soft, and moist. The teeth should be um, white. Yellow, yellowish of the teeth or brownish color of the teeth indicates tobacco or caffeine. Ask the patient to open their mouth. Check under the tongue for any canker sores. Check the teeth for oral hygiene, note, noting the position and then the alignment. Use a tongue depressor to retract the lips and check. Note the color of the, of the teeth. Look for dental caries or cavities. Inspect the tongue for any color, pink and smooth. Ask the patient to protrude their tongue, wear a glove, use standard precautions to check under the tongue. Look at the roof of the mouth located anteriorly. Look at the soft pilot located posteriorly. Check the uvula and soft pilot. Ask the patient to open their mouth and say, ah, the uvula should rise up. Look at the neck, the, uh, anterior, tri the anterior triangulus consists of the trachea, the thyroid gland, and the carotid artery. The posterior triangulus contains the posterior larynx and the lymph nodes. Have the patient open their mouth wide and say, I, you will see the rise and fall of the uvula. The trachea should be midline and symmetrical. Checking the thyroid. Place your hand behind the patient. Ask the patient to swallow while palpating the thyroid gland. Palpate the lymph node. There is about nine lymph nodes. So the lymph nodes collect lymph fluids from the head, ears, nose, and cheek and play a vital role in protecting the body from um, foreign antigens. Large fixed red tender indicates lymph nodes indicates an infection, HIV or auto, autoimmune disease. Lymph nodes should not be palpable. Face the patient, use a methodical approach, inspect and palpate both sides of the neck and, com and compare and contrast. Use the uh, pads of three fingers to assess the lymph nodes. Normal lymph nodes are mobile. Thyroid gland. Go behind the patient and palpate. Ask the patient to swallow. This should help to assess um, the thyroid. The anterior approach. Check um, the carotid artery. The carotid artery should not be palpated together. It should only palpate one side at a time due to um, it will cause decrease in blood um, perfusion. And the patient can get dizzy and passed out. So palpate, palpate each side at one at a time. Jungler vein distension. Patient in a 45 degree angle. Turn their head to the lateral side. Inspect the jungler vein for any distensions which will indicate fluid overlay, overload or 
overload or CHF. Palpate the trachea should be midline and symmetrical. Any masses in the neck, any mediastinal shift will cause the trachea to displace laterally. These are some of the landmarks of the thorax examination. Inspect the anterior thorax. Inspect, percuss, palpate, and auscultate for any advantageous sounds. Chest, chest expansion. Observe the um, the anterior thorax. Look at the size and shape. Normally, the um, with a barrel chest indicates COPD. Patient leaning over a table indicates um, problems with breathing. Check for lung expansion. Tatal frematus. Use the ulnar surface of your hand against the patient's chest wall and say 99. For tatal frematus, it's the vibration that you will feel on the patient's chest. Increased tatal frematus will be noted with consolidation such as um, masses or plural effusion or pneumonia. Auscultate for advantageous songs, crackles, fine, high-pitched song here during inspiration. Ronca is heard over the trachea and the bronchia, loud, loud um, pitch. Wheezing is heard over all lung fields. High pitch musical sound, plural friction rub. Inflame plural sprays, rubbing against the visceral sprays. Heard over the anterior lung, grating sound. I have a simple um, question here. The answer is B, Ronkai. As, uh, assess the anterior thorax and the posterior thorax. Observe if the patient is using any axillary, accessory muscles. Observe their respiratory rate. Is it normal? Compare each side. Oscitate bronchial sounds. Auscultate the landmarks of the um of the heart valves, the pulmonic, pulmonic, the tricuspid, and the mitral and the aortic valve. Assess the point of maximal impulse, the fourth or fifth intercostal, left midclavicular line. Listen to these different sounds. S1, S2 is hard over the apex and they are high pitch. Ventricular gallop is three and four. Murmur is a switching or blowing sound. Hard at the beginning of, of the and, and middle. Trills palpate for sensation that resembles a purring cat thrill. Inspect the heart landmarks. Inspect and palpate simultaneously. Murmurs are also graded. Any abnormal songs or missing heart rate is called dysrhythmias.